So in this video, we're going to talk about a factorial or two-way ANOVA. A two-way simply means there are two independent variables involved in the analysis of variance. Up until this point, I talked about a one-way ANOVA or a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. And in those two cases, there's only one independent variable involved. But more often than not, in research, we're interested in multiple factors and see how that influences the, our outcome measure or our dependent variable. And the questions are very similar to a one-way ANOVA. We want to know, is there a difference? In the independent variable between different levels of the independent variable, what we call the main effects. But the main question that is answered with a two-way ANOVA is the interaction. We want to know, is there an interaction between factors or between independent variables on the dependent variable? In other words, does the effect of one factor depend on the effect of another factor? And that is answered with what's known as the interaction. In fact, when you run the ANOVA, you'll get a summary table that is not that much different from what you what we did with the one-way ANOVA is that, uh, that you get three F ratios. Remember an F ratio is a ratio between true variance and error variance. And you'll get that for each of the main effects that means the independent variable 1 or an independent variable 2 as well as the interaction. So you'll get three null hypotheses that will be tested with this ANOVA. So the best way to describe this is obviously using an example I've got here a sample of you know adult recreational athletes, if you will, and what we're measuring here is their attitude towards the the exercise, and um, we want to know what the influence of intensity is on attitude between low fit and high fit um, uh, individuals, and you can see here that the low fit group responds favorably to the low intensity exercise. I mean, they're from high to low, their mean attitude score increases. Whereas the high fit group, you can see it's the, the it's exact opposite. They um, responded in the, uh, basically in the opposite direction. So they see that their mean attitude score decreases as they go from high to low. So just by looking at this, mean attitude score is affected by both intensity of the exercise as well as the fitness group to which these individuals belong. If they responded the same way, the graph would actually look like this. Right, where as they go from high intensity to low intensity, their mean attitude score decreases the same way, regardless of the fitness group to which they belong. So in this case, the, the interaction would not be significant. There would not be an interaction between factors. Uh, another example here in which there would be a significant interaction is one in which just the low fit group would respond to intensity um, in terms of the exercise. And you can see here that the low fit group increased their mean attitude score as they went from high to low, whereas the high fit group remained constant. Now these are just plot lines, and with plot lines you can only make uh, you know, these types of interpretations on the sample itself, and we want to extend that result to the general population, so we have to run an analysis of variance. So this is how the summary table looks like. Again, very similar to what you, uh, what we showed in the one-way ANOVA. This is a two by two analysis of variance. It's called two by two because there are two levels of intensity, high and low, as well as two levels of fitness, high and low as well. So you get two by two analysis of variance. You can see here that each row represents the sum of squares, degrees of freedom, the mean squares, as well as the F statistic for each respective source of variance. So this is each of the factors, which is called a factor. A and B, or intensity and fitness, as well as the interaction. So this is what we're going to concentrate on, is what, whether or not there is a significant interaction between factors when we run this analysis of variance. So let's take a look at example. I'm going to do this in our studio, um, and we're going to look at baseball. Yeah, it's, it's being that it, baseball is uh, my favorite sport, so I talk a, about, a lot about baseball, and a lot of stats are involved in baseball. So we got a baseball player here. We're testing on their field fielding coverages, and we use what's called a defensive skills test, so that the higher they score on the test, the better their their fielding is. The the more coverage they get in fielding. Players were categorized according to their position, whether they're pitchers or position players. Position players are basically any other player that's not a pitcher and the instructional method, whether they use drills and scrimmages. So uh, this is also a two by two, or not repeated measures, I almost said repeated measures, it's a two by two ANOVA. So it's a factorial ANOVA. So the null hypothesis for the main effects, so main effects are each one of these factors, 
The null hypothesis for the first one is there's no difference in fielding coverage between pitchers and position players. There's no difference in fielding coverage between instructional methods, that means between drills and um, um, scrimmages. So those are the two means. This is the main effect of position, and this is the main effect of the instructional methods. So, so those are the two null hypotheses, but we need one more null hypothesis that involves the interaction. So the, we want to test the, and in fact, that's our primary question, right? We want to test the null hypothesis that there is no interaction between instructional method and position. As I, stated, as I stated here, instructional method on fielding performance is the same for both pitchers and position players. Uh, so this is the sample data. As I mentioned earlier, the higher the score, the better the fielding coverage is, uh, the better the, pil the fielding coverage is for that particular player. Uh, the positions here, uh, one represents pitcher, uh, number two represents position players or any other player besides a pitcher. Instructional method one is uh, scrimmage and two represents drills. So we're going to enter all this data into our studio and then run our analysis. All right, so let's go ahead and perform this two-way analysis of variance on that baseball data in our studio. I'm going to go ahead and load in my tidyverse. I'm going to import that baseball data into this data vector called DAT. And if you're in my research methods class, you can download this table, this data set from Canvas. And then I'm going to ensure or define that the method and position columns in this data set are in fact factors or treated as an independent variable. In other words, they're nominal data that we have here, basically ones and twos. Uh, this, these lines of codes, 10 through lines 10 through 16, represent uh, the code to generate the summary statistics. And I'll show you exactly how that looks like in a sec here in PowerPoint. And then I'm going to generate a plot. Shows you right here. And before we do the ANOVA, let's go ahead and interpret this plot real quick. Okay, so these are the summary statistics in, that we just calculated in our studio. For each of the instructional methods, you can see that they're collapsed by position, for pitchers and position players. These are their mean and standard deviation of fielding coverages. Uh, so you can see that the pitchers uh, have, at least in fielding coverage, have lower uh, fielding coverage because compared to position players in the instructional scrimmage, whereas in drills, the pitchers actually perform better using drills in terms of the fielding coverage. Let's take a look at the same set of data in graphical form here. These are the plot lines. The red line here represents pitchers and the blue line represents position players. You could see that, as I mentioned, pitchers perform better in terms of fielding coverage when they use drills as opposed to scrimmages. And the same, I shouldn't say the same, the, the opposite is true for the position players in which they perform better using scrimmages compared to drills. Now, these plot lines are informative, but they only tell us on what the sample of position, um, position and pitcher players are doing. What we want to know is can we extend this result to the population? We have to perform an analysis of variance to do that. In this case, a two-way ANOVA that we'll do in our studio. Okay, so I am now back in our studio, and we're going to run these two lines of code here. Again, if you're following along, this is lines 26 through 28, really 27 and 28. Uh, what this means is that I'm going to assign the results of the ANOVA to this data frame or data vector called ANOVA. AOV is the function that we use, so it is the same function that we use for a one-way ANOVA. The dependent variable score, that is fielding coverage score. It is dependent on both position and method, really the, the interaction of position and method from the DAT data set. So I'm going to go ahead and run that and then I'm going to print out the results of the ANOVA as shown here and let's go ahead and interpret that. Okay, so this is the same table I showed you earlier with their mean filling coverages the uh, organized by scrimmage and drills as well as position. What we want to know is first from the two-way ANOVA, is there a significant interaction between position and method? And that's provided by this row here. 
you could see that the the interaction is statistically significant. In fact, you would conclude that there is a significant interaction between position and method based on this F value, or more specifically, this, this P value here. This says that there is a 1.7 probability of observing a result of 6.745 if the null hypothesis in the population was true. In other words, if there was no interaction between method and position in the population, the probability of getting an F value of 6.75, remember an F value is a variance, is a ratio of true variance to error, and in this case we got 6.745, the probability of observing that F value or getting that result is 1.7%, and because that's below our 0.05 alpha level, we can conclude that there is a significant interaction between instructional method and position for fielding coverage. Now, now this is how this is stated. What I just, this result I just uh, told you about is stated in APA format. This is the F statistic that's dependent on the degree degree of freedom due to the interaction. There's only one interaction here. Uh, and the residual, which is the error term. So that's 20. So that's the degree of freedom for error. And that is 6.75. That's the F statistic. And the probability of getting or observing that F statistic or F value is less than 5% right, 1.7%. So the other way to interpret this result is by saying that the effect of instructional method on fielding coverage differs between pitchers and position players. So because of that, we have to do a, kind of a, a follow-up test or a follow-up test that is specific to a two-way ANOVA. So we're going to go back into our studio. Okay, so because the ANOVA found that there was a significant interaction between factors, what we then need to do is run what's called simple main effects. We were essentially running a separate ANOVA for each level of our main factor. In other words, this first one here, I'll give you an example here. Uh, what I did here is running is run an ANOVA to determine whether or not there's a difference in field and coverage between instructional methods in pitchers alone. So for now I'm ignoring all the position players and I'm just looking at pitchers and we'll determine whether or not there's a difference in field and coverage between drills and scrimmages. And then I do the same thing for position players. So notice I'm running one way ANOVAs but I'm doing it at each level in this case of position. Pitchers, position players. Then I switch it over to the other main effect. That's why it's called simple main effects, because we're doing at each level. So in this method, the instructional method is scrimmage, and I want to know whether or not there's a difference in field coverage between positions, between pitchers and position players. And then this is one, two. Uh, now I'm looking at drills. And within the instructional method of drills, I want to know whether or not there's a difference in filling coverage between pitchers and position players. So I'm going to go ahead and run all of these simple main effects. Cool. And let's go back and, and, and interpret the results. Okay, so according to our simple main effects follow-up to the two-way ANOVA, when we're looking at pitchers, the position, we want to know is there a difference in field and coverage between instructional methods, between scrimmages and drills. And according to this, to so this result, you could see here, oh, it just shows up, there it go, uh, the p-value is less than 0 0.05. So that means there is a 3.68% probability of observing an f-value of 5.8 given that the null hypothesis is true in the population. Now, that's, again, that's somewhat abstract. We have to define what that null hypothesis is. And so in this case, the null hypothesis is that there is no difference in field and coverage between scrimmages and drills. The probability of getting this result is less than 0 0.05. So therefore, we have to conclude that there is a significant difference in field and coverage between scrimmages and drills in pitchers, in pitchers alone. So that means pitchers perform better using drills then they do scrimmages. And the way that I would illustrate this is go back to the plot lines that I showed you earlier, and I would highlight just the pictures alone, their mean fielding coverages, as shown here. As I mentioned earlier, it's obvious that they improve using drills, but we don't know whether or not that applies to the general population. This p-value indicates that. So here, because the there is a significant um, difference, 
between fielding coverages uh, of scrimmages and drills, we can then you know reject that null hypothesis and include that in pitchers alone, the, the pitchers improve or perform better using drills. Now let's take a look at the position players. In the same simple main effects that I showed you earlier, what we found was that although there is a significant, significant I should say significant, there is a difference in field coverage between scrimmages and drills, that differences in means was not statistically different. So this is a perfect example where the sample shows that they're different, but that doesn't seem to vibe with what's happening in the general population. In fact, there is a 27.9% probability that this difference uh, would occur if the null hypothesis is true, if there was no difference in mean fielding coverages between scrimmages and drills. However, if we were to run that same simple main effects on so, you know, instructional methods and want to determine whether or not there's a difference between pitchers and position players in field and coverage. What we found here is that in the instructional method of scrimmages, there is a significant difference between position, I'm sorry, position players and pitchers. In other words, using the instructional method of scrimmages, position players perform significantly better than pitchers. And I illustrate this down here. Position players perform significantly better through scrimmages than pitchers. And this is how you would write this in APA format. Show the F statistic as well as the p-value. Go back to my my uh, plot lines here. And I'm just looking at scrimmages alone. Between these two, there is a significant difference in fielding coverage. And in this case, we can conclude that position players perform better when using scrimmages.